So this didn't uh, work very well, I think because of the right boundary. So uh, yeah, so let's let's actually change that a little bit. So so let's actually change our. Uh, let me explain why things didn't work. Okay. We set we set the boundary condition at the right to zero, right? Which means the flux at the right boundary is actually equal to zero. No conserved quantity can go out of the right boundary. But the wave speed over here is positive, so so the the flux uh, is has is always positive, right? So stuff keeps piling up on the right boundary, which ultimately causes the solution to go go up to very high values. So um, maybe I think it's a good idea is to start with a, a sine function and uh, solve this again and plot the x. So here we can see that uh, uh, the solution becomes a develops a discontinuity and the discontinuity stays there without blowing up. All right. And uh, uh, a way to deal with the previous case is by modifying the boundary condition a little bit. So after you compute this, you can set uh, uh, what you can set is uh, instead of uh, setting the interface, instead of setting the right value the flux at the right uh, interface to zero I'm just going to set it to f end which is the flux computed at the very last uh, uh, very last interval and uh, for this case I actually know that the waves are traveling towards the right at that location so I it's it's a uh, it's appropriate to use the flux on the left right so so let's do that and uh, uh, let's go back to our u0 go to cosine and let's solve this again and uh, plot and here uh, we see we have the solution that uh, developed a shockwave at our expected location right and uh, and the shockwave has moved towards the left a little bit. So, so let's actually plot x and u for all of these uh, uh, times. And you can see initially you have this uh, uh, sinusoidal curve and uh, the waves are moving towards the left and the waves are moving towards right here. You form a discontinuity over here and the discontinuity gets, gets shrinked and also then it starts to move towards the left. All right, so that's kind of how the solution is evolving in this case. So, so basically, by going into finite volume, we are able to capture discontinuities and its evolution without a problem. Okay. Any questions so far for this? No. So because we are only talking about final volume for only a little bit and uh, uh, final volume methods get uh, used a lot, especially in computational fluid mechanics, I just want to cover several topics in very quick succession. Okay, so first of all is that we have uh, uh, analyzed the method that captures shockwaves with no problem. But if you do a detailed uh, Taylor series analysis, you're going to find out that the solution is only the approximation method we use, which is uh, uh, approximating the approximating the flux either using the left or right value is only first order accurate. In order to develop a second order accurate scheme, you have to use what's called a, a flux limiter. So basically, that's a detection mechanism of is there a shockwave or not. If there is a shockwave, we'll do what we are doing over here. If there is no shockwave around, we want to use a flux, which, for example, this or this one, right? That obtains a second order accuracy. Okay, so this is the kind of uh, things uh, uh, that are in 
the current state of these solvers right now is that when there is a shock discontinuity, this kind of uh, a shock resolving flux is used and otherwise a second order central average type of flux is used.